Welcome to Paradox Jukebox, an unconventional podcast for unconventional musicians. Brought to you by Music on the Move Studios, a woman-led and owned company whose mission is to guide musicians and move their careers forward through education and live events. I'm your host, Katie Thompson. Thank you so much for listening in. Today on the show, I have with me Catalina, a Chilean artist who moved to the States about 10 years ago. On this episode, we're going to discuss what it was like for her to move to the States without her family, what her journey to Nashville looked like, and what it has continued to look like as a Latina artist in the Nashville scene. And we discuss her relationships with her fans and friends, and then we also talk about the new music that she has coming out. So please stay tuned, because throughout the podcast, I will splice in snippets of her music. So, without any further ado, here is Catalina. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the podcast today. I have Catalina on the show. Catalina, say hi for me, please. Hello. Hello, everybody. Thank you so very much, my friend, for being here. I'm so excited to to have you here. I'm excited to play with you this April at the showcase at Marathon Music Works. It's going to be so much fun. Yes, I'm super excited. Thank you for having me on the on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am pumped. All right. So uh, I just want to dive in real quick here. There's, you know, so you are, uh, you are from Chile, correct? I am. Yep. Born and raised. So cool. So cool. So can you speak to some of the differences between music in Chile and music in the U.S. or Nashville specifically? I mean, you, you won't find country music, for example, (laughs) down in Chile, you won't find, I guess, like a a lot of like the singer songwriter, like type of vibe that Nashville has in terms of just like a a lot of like songwriting collaboration and a lot of co-writes and things like that. It doesn't super exist from, from what I can tell, but like the pop scene, folk scene, interestingly enough, like the hip hop trap and like R and B scene is also like coming about i think just because there was a lot of like latin latin urban music too and coming out of like reggaeton and now like you know people like jay belvin or rosalia and bad bunny um kind of becoming like just global sensations i think some of that too some of that influence is kind of trickling into chile as well but there's also just like a lot of like chilean folk music um or just not even like Chilean, perhaps just like folk music and in Spanish and pop in Spanish, but there's definitely a lot of like similarities. But I think from what I've seen, it's been like the whole like pop, trap, hip hop, R and B, um, electronic music. It has been like a pretty a pretty big hit, I think, or like very prominent in Chile as of the last few years. That's awesome. Yeah. Super cool. So, um, you know, how has it been to be a Chilean in a foreign country for the last 10 years? And have you faced any kind of challenges or have you had any like major opportunities here? Yeah, it's been I mean, the biggest challenge at the beginning was being away from home, being away from family. Mm -hmm. Um, I was lucky enough that like the people that I met in college and like the friends that I made, their families kind of adopted me. And I was in the music program up at university of new Haven in Connecticut. And that's where I met my first musical collaborator who is still a collaborator till this day. Oh, wow. um, who is, yeah. Um, Evan Paton. So he's my dear friend and also bassist in my band. He lives in Nashville now too. Um, and it was through him that I met Justin, our guitar player. And then up in Connecticut, I met my husband and, dragged him down here to Nashville. Now he's my other guitar player too. Um, and then we've met, um, really great musicians here. Um, both Julia Meredith and Megan Clark, who became the sax and drummer of the band respectively. Um, but 
Yeah, it's been, I feel like I, I, I also already digressed from the question, but <laughs> I think that was the biggest challenge at first, just kind of like knowing, just settling in in terms of like, not only like the career aspect of things, but just like living life in a completely different country, miles and miles away from home without really having like, you know, a, a support system to fall back on. And surprisingly enough it came out it came just really naturally I'm like super thankful for all my friends and their families who have adopted me and now like you know kind of just the friends that become family and coming to Nashville too that that was kind of a huge awakening as well just because the the vibe down here is just so much more communal yeah like the sense of community is super strong not only like the musical community but just overall the people that I've met through like my day jobs at shows just so much support so even if someone was to you know tell you no there's like they direct you to more open doors perhaps or doors that you can go knock on they're like it's not going to work for me but here's my friend's info and like they would love your music so that's been like super rewarding and and like just I don't know something that's been like a gift (laughs) from from the heavens from the universe um (laughs) Yeah, it's been it's been nice. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I mean, it's you know, being away from your family, I'm I'm sure that's that has definitely been tough. But it sounds like you've built a family here in the states, mm-hmm. you know, especially in Nashville. And and I agree with you. Nashville is a very communal place. The, there's there's always a door open somewhere, and usually people are not playing things so close to the chest that they don't open opportunities for other people. I have to say that's probably mm-hmm. the the nicest thing about Nashville is that everybody is willing to help everybody else. It's not cutthroat. Yeah, no, not at all. And like, I was so hesitant at first too, because I mean, my, my best friends and I had come down to Nashville the year before we graduated and we were like, wow, this is amazing. The food was amazing. All the like musical places, just like we were completely enamored by it. Um, and then one of those best friends moved down here and I was like, okay, maybe we should make the move because there wasn't really a lot to do up in Connecticut, like music wise in terms of like what the scene was. It was a little bit more like punk rock or like pop punk alternative rock I kind of really didn't like find a good place to fit in Mm -hmm. and while I did stand out it just wasn't there wasn't any enough like other artists that I could play with consistently or like go on tour just it hadn't clicked for me there just yet but I was like oof Nashville in the south are people going to want to listen to like a Latin alternative crossover type artist and then especially like back in 2018 2019 when we started doing doing some like so far sounds like shows and touring like the like the southern region like just in general mm-hmm. i was hesitant cuz i was like how will people receive multifacetica for example like music in spanish will people like it will people shy away from it because it's so, something so foreign and so unknown and that's been i think the most gratifying surprise the fact that like m- multi surprisingly enough was one of the songs out of my last project that resonated the most with people and I and I never thought that it would like here in the U.S. at least as much as it did and it's been like such a a wonderful blessing That's awesome. I'm so glad to hear that. Well, and I'm I'm biased because I I got to play the last 
uh, Music on the Move showcase that you were on. So I actually got to play that guitar part. So that mm-hmm. was that was my favorite song of all of the ones that we did that night. I mean, and we we played some awesome music, but there was just something so uh inviting about that song and everybody in the audience got into it everybody loved that song so congratulations oh thank you (laughs) thank you so much (laughs) yeah yeah for sure well that's that's so great so you know with being a a latina artist and you know and not being sure of you know whether or not your music was going to be received well you know what is what has it been like with your fans what's your relationship like with your fans it's friendly. I mean, it's I feel it's always interesting when people are like, "How do how do your fans feel or growing your fan base?" And I I feel like I'm still at the point where I don't can I don't I don't consider that I have fans if that makes sense. Like <laughs> I feel like you know, in terms of like looking at like my followers or people that listen, they just end up becoming friends anyway. Sure. And like I lead like a very like I mean, if people visit my social media, it's like it's not just like pumping out music or pumping out like an aesthetic like 24 7 I I do like it to be aesthetically pleasing sometimes but I just try and kind of like do myself and just be me and I love connecting with the people that like share my music and getting to know them and then a, a super prime example of this are my are my now friends Anthony and Leslie that now live in California but they had seen me play a couple times here in Nashville and they came up to me at my release show for multi in 2019 and it was just they had so many great things to say it almost like brought me to tears and I was like I'm so thankful and then they kept coming to shows and like perhaps though you know the two of them are people that folks would consider like fans but just from all the beautiful conversations that we've had at shows like how supportive they've been and like we've just ended up becoming like really good friends and even though they're in California we like talk every now and then they always have like text me or message me about like the songs and you know, they're like, whenever you come to California, we'll like do some shows and they can host me. And whenever they come here too, it'd be nice to like see them again. Obviously with COVID, it's been a trip, but, sure. um, but yeah, I would, I would say it's like pretty friendly. I don't, everybody who follows me and listens to me, you know, beyond fans, I just, there are people trying to have put a soundtrack to their lives and I appreciate that they include me in that. That's awesome. Oh, that is so cool. What a way to to paint a picture of, <laughs> of your relationship with your fans. I think, well, it, it's important because especially in today's, you know, uh, social media climate, there are so mm. many things that are that are fake and disingenuous. And it's just refreshing to hear that, you know, your your listeners are more than fans to you. They they become friends and then, you know, eventually they become family. So that's mm-hmm. that's a beautiful thing. Good for you. Thank you. So tell me this, are you are you working on new music? Do you have new music coming out soon? I do. I do. Um so I just released a new song um in March for my mom's birthday. It was a song that was inspired by her, for mm-hmm. her, but also for everybody else. It's called Control. Um we, people can also say Control because it's a song in Spanish. It's um I think I'm trying to think it's the first like more serious ballad, I think. Like alternative rock pop ballad that I've ever released. Oh wow. Um yeah, so that that is a song that is out now and people that come to the show on the 28th will be able to hear in a little bit more of a stripped down version that um we will create, but um but yeah, that song is out now. Um it's been it's also again been like another blessing because it's a song in Spanish. Um I released it on my mom's birthday and it was a Tuesday, so it kind of goes against all industry standards of new music <laughs> Friday and perhaps it being in English and I'm lucky enough it landed me like my first feature on the Nashville scene and it went on print. Wow. So I've just been yeah, it, it it's again one of those things where out of all the songs that I, I'm planning on releasing this year, Control was probably like the underdog just because it, it, you know, p- people's attention spams are so fast, right? And they want yeah. like, and now we're coming into spring and summer. So I think people want it, you know, want something upbeat. They can roll their windows down and like drive to. And I have those. Um, but this was just such a like, I mean, I wanted to release it because it was such a special song with the meaning behind it and just like as the gift as it was for my mom. And And I was just like, that's enough for me. Like, I want to release it because of that. And whatever happens, happens. And just the fact that it's gotten 
so much like a great reception from not only like industry people or, or the press, but just from like everybody that's been listening has been really connecting with it, which has been super special. But it begins that song just begins the the next few months of 2021 and all the new music that's to come, which I don't have a, a clear cut plan on everything yet, but there is music coming that I can tell everyone for sure. <laughs> that's wonderful. And I just love the fact that you went against all the industry standards, like releasing it <laughs> on a Tuesday and it's, you know, it, it's a completely different brand of music, but obviously you're doing something right because people are noticing and they're, they're starting to turn heads. So good for you that is thanks katie yeah no that's exciting that is super exciting so so with the rest of this music i know you said you don't really have a plan is it do you know are you going to release it as singles are you thinking maybe like an ep do you have any idea there at all yes definitely i think i'm definitely going the singles route this time um with everything with my music it's all it's always going to be an eclectic um, mashup of things, but I think this, you know, the remainder of our songs are re- just, they're all really, really, really different. Um, and I didn't like go into, I, we didn't go into the recording studio, like me and my band being like, okay, this is an EP or like we have a concept. It was like, we've been cooped up in our homes for <laughs> months and we've been like writing and demoing these out like via email to each other. And it was just like, these are like the strongest ones and like the funnest ones mm-hmm. that we had like developed thus far um and the ones we were most confident in so we were like let's do it and at the beginning too it was only going to be three songs and then I was like I was like sitting on one that I was like super excited and proud of and then we had another one that was kind of like just a complete surprise out of left field that the rest of the band also dug and we're like okay yeah let's make it five songs instead of three so it all (laughs) escalated pretty quickly (laughs) but yeah they're all going to be singles and just little little treats for everybody to listen this this year that's awesome are you going to do uh any music videos or anything for them oh yeah (laughs) oh yeah i like I, lo- I mean, I love making music. I love performing. I love singing it. But I also just love the visual, like, accompaniment of them. I, like, every time that I release a song or a project, I spend so much time and perhaps a little too much time sometimes just obsessing obsessing over the visuals. But I just think nowadays it's so – and with, like, you know, Spotify's doing the canvas thing and music videos and lyric videos. It, it's just such a nice way to – like provide the same message perhaps that the song has or perhaps a different one you get to tell other stories via the visuals as well and perhaps in ways that like the audience didn't depict it or could like visualize it in their head and sometimes too when I'm writing or we're recording I'm already like having (laughs) visions I mean it sounds silly but I already can see like there's there's been times where I'm like still listening to the songs when I'm driving to like the grocery store, or, you know, to run errands in the last couple of months. And I know ex- I'm like picturing exactly what I would want to 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 do visual wise. So people can definitely expect some music videos coming out with all these songs, too. Awesome. So do you uh, do you produce your own music videos or do you uh, work with a producer? I've been, I've been working with different, um, yeah, different like directors and producers for music videos thus far, um, with the lyric video that we released just recently for control. It was just done by my husband and I, um, yeah, so that was, and we've, him and I have partnered up on other, um, the lyric video for headspace too. So we, we have done a couple of things, DIY, it all depends on the idea too. So I don't work with someone consistently, um, but when I have ideas, if they're a little bit bigger than what I think I can produce myself, definitely want to partner partner up with someone else who can kind of bring help me bring that vision to life. Smart. Very smart. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Catalina, thank you so very much for, for agreeing to be on the, on the show. Thank you for being a part of the uh, Music on the Move showcase. We cannot wait to have you in April. Oh, I cannot wait. It's my first time out and about. <laughs> Oh, doing good. a show in 
over a year. So I am so, so ready to see you in person, to see everybody else in person and just have like a wonderful night. Safely, of course, but wonderful no- nonetheless. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and Marathon is awesome about their uh, their COVID safe protocols. They're, they're super on top of it. So we're going to have a super safe and fun evening for sure. Yeah. Um, so could you tell us where can we find your music and read about all of all of the awesome things you're doing? Yes, if if everyone wants to hit up my website, catalinamusic.net, because .com was taken. So catalinamusic.net is where people can kind of go to the hub of everything else. And my website is also in English and in Spanish. So it's bilingual for those who need it or would like to explore um, the music in Spanish as well. Um, and then on the socials, it's at Catalina's Music. Thank you again, my friend. It's been lovely to have you, and I cannot wait for this new music coming out. Oh, thank you so much, Katie, for having me, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. What a cool episode. Thank you so much, Catalina, for being here. You are a darling. Everybody go check out her stuff. Buy her music. Buy her merch. Buy all of the things. Go see her in concert. She's a lovely, lovely person. And tell her that Katie sent you. We are brought to you by Music on the Move Studios. If you would like to learn more about us, visit us at musiconthemovestudios.com backslash Paradox Jukebox. All of our episodes will be listed there for your listening pleasure. Thank you so much to Aaron McClendon for providing our theme song, Shake It In My Boots. You can get it wherever you get your music. If you want to learn more about me, I'm Katie Thompson. You can find me at katiethompsonmusic.com with all of my bands and shows and things that are listed. I do probably too much for one person, but whatever, it's fine. With that being said, I will leave you with the immortal words of Billy Madison. Peace, I'm out of here.